Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of the Kingdom Hearts Final Mix HD playthrough for PC. I am of course the Nomadic Arc and with me today we don't have a quite a full house but we have a we have Rat Earth. Uh, bonjour. And we have an Axite. Hola señores y señoritas. Wow, I can't now, believe you speak Italian. Now, uh, <laughs> now uh, we're going to do something different to uh, open this episode. We've got a mini game to go through, the Jungle Slider mini game. And while we do that, we're going to have an Excite read us some interesting fan fiction. Yeah. Man, do you remember when, let, when fan fiction me... just kind of started and really took off? No, now, before, I was like two years old. Now, before we uh, before we get started on the fan fiction, allow me to just explain the mini game real quick. It's a simple mini game where you're uh, sliding along the branches of the trees throughout deep jungle and gathering fruits. You need to collect all the fruits to uh, complete the complete the track and get the reward, and to open up the final the next track. And each time you go through, and each time you go uh, do the mini game, you have to play all the get all the previous fruits and then move on to the next track if you miss any then it, you may as well start completely over anyways on with the fan fiction <clears throat> thank you thank you uh um, so we first, are starting we, with what's that can we can we get like a um a reference for when the for when this particular fan fiction that we're reading right now when it was written. Oh um, yeah, just to get of ourselves course. in like the mindset. So like we we were thinking of kind of going back a little bit, you know, in homage to when the games came out and when the fan fiction started. So we went all the way back to two thousand and two, and just had kind of a look, you know, and found That's something right. wonderfully fantastic. Pop in your Dragon Ball VHS, Torrent, um, <laughs> Card Capture Sakura. Yep. <laughs> let's let's go. All go right, grab everybody. The, uh, your Ninja Scroll DVD from Blockbuster. <laughs> oh God! And that one was violent too. Ah, oh, the nostalgia. It hurts so bad. But. No, we're not, we're gonna start with something that doesn't hurt so bad. Don't worry. We're not gonna do anything that's like super, super duper awful. But a little bit of a memory lane. Back to the secret charms of the Palpa fruit, starring Riku and Sora, where the two I'm boys sure share a Palpa fruit on Destiny Island. And we all know where that's going. Yeah. <laughs> And I've got my tea ready, but here we go. <clears throat> Dedicated to all the Riku and Sora fans out there. He sighed, shaking his head. You still don't got it. Short silver strands of hair blew past in the warm sea wind as the boy dodged the swing, the whoosh of a wooden sword narrowly missing his shoulder. His opponent stared back at him, Fiery blue eyes meeting those of a calm ocean green. Sora leaped into the air again, toy sword raised, poised to strike a blow at his friend and rival. Riku only smiled, carefully watching Sora's jump. The graceful arc of the brown-haired boy as he reached his zenith. Then he came plummeting down, the surety of a strike shining on his face. At the last possible minute, Riku rolled aside, his gaze still centered on the look of Sora's surprised expression as his target disappeared from view. Ha! Riku dashed forward, crashing his sword into Sora's shoulder none too gently. Good he... impression of the combat grunt there. <laughs> he knocked the younger boy back, and while Sora was still trying to recover from the blow, Riku crouched down, his muscles bunching for the leap that would knock his rival into the water. Sora managed to scramble out of the way in time, but Riku was also prepared. And just as Sora was about to allow himself a breather, 
Two swift slashes of Riku's sword brought him tumbling into the sea with a splash. Ah, man! Sora clambered out of the water, glistening drops of dew clinging to his useful eyelashes. Now the score is 0 to 10! He wiped a hand through his hair and took off his jacket, wringing the sodden thing free of water. Riku grinned and climbed back onto the paupu tree where he'd been lounging in the sun for the past hour. Maybe next time, Riku said with a smirk and a shrug. Hang your shirt here and it'll dry faster. He patted a spot of tree trunk next to him. Nah, Soros shook his head. It'll be fine. But nevertheless, he handed his shirt to his friend. Did you finish all his work today? Work? Riku laughed. You mean finding a couple of logs for Kairi? Sora nodded. I gave her my stuff already, Riku stretched, his arms reaching for the sky, his back arching gracefully. He watched Sora look at him out of the corner of his eye, the boy's blue eyes round and wide as he stared dreamily out at the water. No more work for me. I'm going to relax. Riku laid down, folding his arms underneath his head and crossing his legs. Better go finish gathering stuff for Kairi, or she'll be mad when you don't come back. Yeah, I guess, Sora shrugged. He gave his companion a grin and ran off with the wooden sword still in his hand. Riku watched the retreating figure of the boy with a small smirk on his face. Sora was younger by a year, but yet it seemed as if they were worlds apart. Unhindered by the questions of their island or the driving desire to experience other worlds, the boy seemed incredibly young and naive. All he knew was the tiny island in the ocean, the laughs of familiar faces and childish fighting games. When Sora was out of sight, probably scrambling around on the beach, play fighting more friends or searching for provisions for their voyage, Riku placed a black gloved hand on the shirt the younger boy had left in his care. It was still damp and flecked with grains of sand from his fall. Riku raised the cloth to his face and inhaled deeply its scent. Oh god, oh god. Oh god. I'm sorry. E even prepared for this, I wasn't expecting 2002 to hit this much. Um, anyhow. It smelled of the island of Sora's naivete, of their rivalry and friendship. Riku placed the shirt back on the trunk of the Paupu tree, laying it out carefully in the sun so that it would dry by evening fall. Riku stood, climbing his way to the leaves of the tree, where the branches hung out precariously over the water. With one hand steadying himself on the branches, Riku reached an arm out snatching the furthest of the little yellow fruits. Riku grinned, turning the star-shaped fruit over in his hands. He knew what it tasted like. It was sour and bitter in a way that burned the tongue and made the eyes water in protest. He had tried one once, as had everyone, and they had found it much to their distaste and immediately tossed what was left of their fruit into the ocean. The sourness had lasted several hours, and the bitterness had lasted at least a few days and since then, no one had dared try it second time. Unless, of course, they wished to test the limits of the legend of the fruit. Riku snorted. He had initially dismissed the thing as an old wives' tale, fun for the innocent minds of children and romantic fools. But in the case it was true... Riku tapped his finger against his chin and thought. Perhaps he was willing to give it another shot. Pause. You've been thinking a lot lately, haven't you? Kyrie inquired, a childish grin on her face. It was here that she was happiest, surrounded by her friends, by the familiarity of the island. Riku leaned against the tree, staring off into the horizon. He needed to go. He needed to discover what was out there. He knew with an absolute sense of certainty that the world couldn't just be endless blue in their island. There was something else out there. Maybe many of them. And he wanted to see them. But not alone. Sora and Kairi would be coming along if all plans went along well. Thanks to you, Riku replied. If you hadn't come here, I probably would have never thought of any of this. He smiled at his comrades, Sora lying on the tree, and Kairi, who he'd come to see as a younger sister, a figure of frailty that he wanted to protect. Kairi, thanks. The girl laughed, lighthearted and content the sound of her voice like the clear tolling of a bell across the twilight ocean. You're welcome. Pause. It was starting to get late, and their parents were calling them home for dinner. It would be one of the last dinner they would share with their families before their voyage of discovery. In a strange sort of way, they all dreaded it, 
imagining the worst, and so the small group broke up silently. Kyrie had rushed off first, leaving the two boys alone in her wake. Sora had gotten up to leave too, after picking up his shirt and dusting off the small particulates of sand. Sora. Sora turned around, halfway across the bridge. Something yellow came hurtling at him, and he instinctively caught it in both hands. He turned the strange thing over, feeling its weight in his arms, its soft skin brushing against his fingers. A palpo fruit? Sora frowned, wondering why on earth Riku would have tossed one of those to him. If two people share one, their destinies become intertwined, Riku explained, making sure to keep his voice offhanded. They'll remain a part of each other's lives no matter what. So? Sora asked. I already know that. Come on, Riku goaded, a superior smirk on his face. I know you want to try it. Sora rolled his eyes. We already tried one when we were kids. Remember? It was gross, Sora made a face. Scared? No, Sora glared at him, taking the older boy up on his challenge. If you want me to eat one, then I will. It's not that simple. You have to share one with me. What are you talking? Still scared? I'm not scared, Sora looked Riku in the eye, determined to win the little, little game. They'd always had some sort of tension in their friendship, striving for dominancy over the other, striving to be better than the other. They never missed a race or passed up a fight. It was a constant battle of wills, and Riku found their intense rivalry exhilarating. There was a certain fury in the way they play fought, never holding back striking at each other with all their strength. And... Oh, where was I? And hey, there we go. And when they were friends, they were intimate and close, for all the world forgetting that just a few minutes ago they were fighting with all their passion their adolescent bodies could muster. They'd grown up together, practically attached at the hip. Riku always looked after Sora, showing him and teaching him, until Kairi arrived and the group of two became three. If Riku lost Kairi on the journey, he would be sad. He'd come to see her as a sister, almost if Sora was his brother. He wanted to protect Kairi, but he wanted to teach her too. Take her into the unknown worlds he knew for sure lay outside the boundaries of their great blue sea. But if he lost Sora on the journey, well, that would be unthinkable. They had always been together, and Riku wanted them to always be together. Not gonna do it, Sora? Riku grinned throwing an arm about Sora's shoulders. I'll do it! Half and half. Done! Riku pulled out a small bone knife and sliced deep into the fruit. He made a few more cuts before peeling the star-shaped delicacy open like a bowl, revealing the meat inside. It was delicate and succulent, white piece of pulp sitting in its own transparent juice. Sora made a face, but nevertheless reached his fingers in first and dug out a tiny morsel. He tentatively licked his fingers, preparing for the full assault of the sour and bitterness of the fruit. Sora's eyes widened. Unlike when he was a child, this fruit now tasted oddly pleasant, leaving a sweet tang on his tongue. Riku, too, found this a surprise as he took a small bite, a small trickle of juice dripping down his chin. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that's making me laugh. It's sweet! Sora exclaimed in surprise, having never even thought of such a bizarre change. That's odd, Riku remarked, but with a small sort of smile. Somehow he'd always known it would be different when shared like that. He offered Sora another bite of fruit on his fingers. More? Sora nodded, snatching the thing from Riku's hand and popping it in his mouth, a childish grin on his face. They finished the Paupu off quickly, tossing the remains of the fruit into the ocean. There they parted, Sora with a happy laugh and wave, and Riku with a quiet, contented smile. They each walked home that night, worried and pensive about their impending journey, but feeling a strange sort of comforting glow in their heart, a small warmth of each other's presence. Riku lay on his bed that night, staring out his window as the lapping waves rushed to the sandy shore in bubbles of white foam, and then retreating back to the dark, mysterious waters. He smiled in the moonlight, a hand placed over his heart, feeling Sora's faint presence inside. Whatever there was to come on their journey, he was content to know that now. His destiny was forever intertwined with Sora's. 
They would always be a part of each other's lives, and wherever Sora would be, whenever the young boy was in danger, he would be there to help him. Good night, Sora. Riku whispered, pulling his blankets to his <laughs> chin and curling so up to creepy. sleep. What? I think it sounds so creepy. It makes it sound like he's gonna kill him. It says he whispered. <laughs> Who whispers like that? It's a good night, Sora. I don't know, that's creepy too. Good night, Sora. Riku whispered, pulling his blankets <laughs> really to his chin and curling up to sleep. Creepy. Riku dreamt that night of an endless corridor of darkness, but he knew in his heart that Sora would be there to save him. Oari. Thank you, thank you. Oh god, that was a trip down memory lane. <laughs> well, that was written pretty much exactly how you'd expect the fanfiction to be written. I, I want to yeah. give it some points. Um, I'm gonna get points. It's a fanfiction from 2002 about Kingdom Hearts, probably written by like a 13 year old. I don't know. The, uh, so the, the fact uh, that it's like the, legible. The vocabulary used in it. The vocabulary used in it suggests otherwise. I don't know. It's precocious 13 year olds. I mean, maybe it's a, a lot of $5 writing... words. You know, somebody who used the dictionary in a thesaurus. I was writing fanfiction like this when I was 13. I'm not going to tell you what it was about, but I wrote fanfiction like that. Although, I, I will give points. You can points. take your own guess about that. <laughs> no. I, unless it's Sonic fanfiction, then I really don't want to know. No, I wasn't into Sonic. So, points for... This is actually kind of a... It, you know, it's, it's not an awful story. It's just the little details that remind me too much of Twilight, now that we have the benefit of knowing about Twilight. I thought it was fanfiction. Wait, no, no, sorry. Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight fanfiction. Twilight's uh, its own uh, thing. No. Like, could be going somewhere. Just a few little weird details. Um, not not so great. You know? Not so great. Didn't? Well, I, I was, I'm actually actually... Am I, like, fucking crazy? Or did, didn't Stephanie Meyer get her start writing Harry Potter fanfiction? I really want to say she sure. did. But that might have been some other YA author. I want to say that I'm actually impressed with myself because I actually, before the recording, the episode, we started recording the episode, I estimated 15 minutes to complete the, uh, the mini game, and 15 minutes it was. Oh damn! Yeah. Congrats. Anyways, I guess now I can. Now I'm free to talk about um, my own experience, my own nostalgic experiences watching AMVs. Oh god! Cut the episode! Cut the episode now! I've been watching so many fucking AMVs. It's now, great. Uh, we're, we're, we're sticking around in Deep Jungle for a moment because I'm trying to get... There's a specific Heartless I want to show off in this episode. Oh, good. Th does that mean I can stop with, like, with the fanfiction? Yeah, because we're actually into action now. What? More than sliding around on tree branches. Fantastic. So I'm hoping he shows up. He... Damn it, show up, you little bastard. He's a rare Heartless, so, uh, you have to be lucky to run into him. Much like the white mushrooms that we've been seeing, but rarer still. Is it literally you have to leave and come back and leave and come back to just... Yeah, because you, uh, you have to chase the RNG. Uh... I, um... See. I think going two, sp two zones forward changes the RNG enough that it's possible to run into him. Yeah. Well, actually, only one zone because the white mushroom showed up here. There he is, Black Ballad. You are about to see what makes this this stupid heartless extremely annoying. He is one of the he is one of the variations of the musical note heartless. Except he is annoying, and he was also introduced in the, uh... I don't know if he was in the original Final Mix, but I'm pretty sure he might have been introduced in, into the, uh... in the, uh, HD ports for the PS3. Oh. There 
There's a reason I was hitting the pu uh, pause yeah. button a whole crap ton of times. Cup game. Yep, it's a shell game. This is rude. Especially since uh, he drops uh, synthesis ingredients. And that are boy, for the, this is not for the only time in this series when Paul's buffering is very helpful. Now here's where it gets hard because he starts moving really fast on the fourth round. I can't even tell which one it was. Oh god. Um. I think he's the last one, it's... but I'm not sure. I think he's the second to last. No. Yeah, it was the second to last because it's the one that shocked me. I should have said that, but I second guessed myself. Here we go again. I've got my eye on the little motherfucker. <laughs> Which one is your Se guess? Second, second from, from the right. right. Or left, sorry, left, not the right. Damn! No, I said the wrong uh. thing. It was the left. How <laughs> <laughs> are lefts and rights mixed up? At least it doesn't reset the progress, because that would be rude. It does not, but he's only here for a limited time. Middle? Middle. That's right. Nice. Got it. He drops lightning stones, and if you get if you get past all of his rounds successfully, he drops multiple lightning stones. Luckily, I've done this off. I've done grinding with him off camera, so I've already got I think the maximum amount of lightning stones I'll ever need at uh, six. Why? Like, yeah, he is. He is extremely annoying to the team. He is the most annoying of the new Harpies. The others aren't so terrible, really. Their gimmicks aren't so terrible. We'll get to them, and we'll get, but we'll get to them when we get to them. Now off to Olympus. I think I just it's it's amazing looking back at this. It's like I get it, you know, it's it's an easy re-release HD on platforms, but I just I, I know nobody's going to remake the game and realistically you know, it's just it happened. But oh the mechanics shell game really that you need to grind for an essential game mechanic? That's part it's of the charm. It's, it's not really essential, though. See, that's, that's oh, well, okay. Ultimate ult it's only for the ultimate weapons. Oh, you can, easily, you can easily beat this game with just the kingdom key. I, I do like that, um... I don't know. I, I won't say I like it. But it, there is there is a kind of dated charm to it. I say that about a lot of games, also. Um, so really, you shouldn't listen to me when it comes to game design. Well, no, I mean it's. I get it. it, it you can you can appreciate it for what it was, or appreciate it. Oh, those darned mechanics. Those were simpler times back then. It is an appreciation of the way some things have changed. But I don't think... I'm not sure it would I, be I, the same. I defend most of the bullshit in Souls games as being funny. So just do not listen to me when it comes to anything about video games. Funnier to watch somebody do it than to do it yourself? I still think it's funny when it happens to me. I mean, I get mad at it, but then I laugh at it. That would be bullshit it's... if they had a shell game in which you died if you didn't pick the right one every single time. Well, like you saw, the, get, the black ballot did damage me when it 
shot me. Yeah. I'm, um, I started playing Elden Ring, but I'm holding off on it a little bit. Mostly because I just, um, I may have gotten it illegally so that I could get in early. And then realize that there are a lot of performance issues that are probably being patched right now. Yeah. So, I was gonna buy it either way. I just kind of wanted to get in on the ground floor and not be left behind. Oh, you've got but... a while. You won't be left behind immediately. Yeah, I figured, uh, because now I'm hearing how long the game is. Honestly, even a yeah, couple it's... months in, because at some point, you know, you've got the release, and then at some point something enters a sale, and then it's revitalized and everything. Well, I'm sure there's also a lot of people like me who, um are waiting for payday and for patches to come out. Mm. Not patches the character, patches the thing that happens in the video games. Oh, though he's probably in it too. No spoilers. Well, I'm just saying... I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm saying I'm not... I'm not I, no, I'm saying that for myself. I know. Yeah. I know who's in it. From game, so he's probably gonna be in it. I mean, he was in uh, Bloodborne as a spider with he his was. human face. Which is creepy as hell! Even for him! Do you know what his first appearance was? What? Was it not Kings was it not Kingsfield? Uh it was I believe no, I don't was he in Kingsfield? Oh, because I know hold that on. was like their that was their first game, right? I don't even yeah, know that one. No no no, he wasn't in he wasn't in Kingsfield. Um, PlayStation was... 1? Sorry, I, you threw me off with that because I was like, was he in Kingsfield? But no, his first appearance was uh, Armored Core. Oh, that's right! I remember reading that. Patch the good the, luck. Uh, yeah, he's a random dude. Random pilot. So at this point, is he pretty much the Biggs and Wedge of From Software? Ah, uh, basically. That or the Moonlight Greatsword. Grade well, the Moonlight Greatsword is the Moonlight Greatsword of From Software. <laughs> it's the, um... I guess it would be the Excalibur of FromSoft. Ooh, look at those Protag oh, eyes. Those are some Protag eyes right there. Soulless. Also, soulless Protag eyes. Also, there was a leak about a new Armored Core. Or last month, I think. So... I'm excited. Yeah, who needs armored core when I'm getting uh, when I'm getting front mission? But you know, it'd be even more exciting. What? A new Metal Wolf Chaos. That's a name that a I joke. haven't heard. That, that was a joke game. It's hilarious at that. And it rocks. It's awesome. I'm the president. I have a mech. I love Metal Wolf Chaos. Problem is, it was never released over here in the states. Not until um, not until Metal Wolf Chaos XD, which released like not very long ago. 2019. I like a... 2019. I like a, I like the XD subtitle there because they because they know the entire game is a joke, so making the title a joke is even better. It's um. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh. It's a very good game. I feel like... <sighs> Metal Wolf... There was a game a long time ago, relatively, which I thought had the same name, but I can't remember it now. Are you thinking of Blade Wolf for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? No, no, like, we're talking, uh... uh Windows or DOS game. Oh, um... That little punk is your next opponent, okay? I don't blow it, just take him out. The great god of the underworld is afraid of a kid? Sorry, but my contract says... I know! You think I don't know? I wrote the contract! I know it says you're only required to kill Hercules in this tournament. But you've got to fight that kid to get to him! Come on! Hey, it's like that old goat says. Rule number 11. It's all just a game. So let loose and have fun with it! I mean, a casualty or two along the way. It's no big deal, right? 
Tell me more. It's bad. Thunder. It's a uh, it's a real stinker. Oh no! It's probably the worst game they've ever made. Oh, it just released two days ago. Yeah, I mean, I think it was in early access, and then it had a demo for a little bit longer. But it's like a live service game. Let's see um, here. Oh no! Yeah, it's legitimately not good. Five out of ten, one star out of five, forty-one out of a hundred. It's forty-one really... out of hundred. FME two. That's Metacritic. No, I was about to say that sounds like a. Oh wait, no, it's... there's is out of forty. It really look. It's really bad. It looks bad. It seems like it plays. And it sucks, because the original thing that they showed, like, several years ago, made it look good. But then they switched to some live service thing. And it's so bad. Um... Development, they wanted to expand the combat system near Automata, experiment with multiplayer... Although... I want to see screenshots, Damn because... It, Goofy! I countered him and Goofy knocked him away! Is he goofing off? You know, if he's goofing off, just tell him to duck. I saw people call Elden Ring say it looked like a PS2 game. And that's stupid, because the game looks great. But Babylon's Fall, in some places, really does look like... Well, actually saying that is a disservice to PS2 games. There's a lot of great looking PS2 games. I don't know what they were thinking. I was actually wondering, like, how long it would take... This Platinum Games was really, really popular. It is really, really popular. It's made... Some fantastic, some fantastic um, action games, but I was wondering how long it would take because you can't keep doing that forever. At some point, something's gonna happen. Well, I mean, they made that Star Fox game. That was bad. They made. I mean, it was you know, I wouldn't say it was like poorly put together, but it wasn't good. Um, they made. I think it was the uh, the Legend of Korra game that wasn't very good. They made the TM the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Which was also not very good. On the other hand, I mean, you're like talking about three... the games, but although they're maybe not very good, I didn't hear, like, horrible things about them either. And the game helpfully uh, punts you back out. But then again, the only thing you lose from not beating Cloud is uh, 80 experience. Oh, you could actually just lose to Cloud and the game would continue? Yep. That is not a mandatory winnable, mandatory win. That is that is uncharacteristically generous from the uh, game. There are a lot of fights that you don't have to win throughout Kingdom Hearts. There's a lot of them in two. Okay, uh, that is still so weird, though.
Although Guard is extremely useful for Cerberus as well, because uh, you can knock back... He has a Fireball attack that you can knock back much easier if, you're, if you have Guard. Alright, and... There's a part of me that loves the implication that, you know, Cloud got knocked out and needs to be saved by Hercules. Jake, I got two words of advice for you. Attack! Attack! Do you think Cloud could beat Hercules in a fight one-on-one? -on -one? Given he wasn't worn out? And it's post yeah. advent Joker? Yeah, yeah, yes. no, like just like a normal fight. Give yeah, me not worn out, it's post advent Joker, Cloud, yes. I guess the real question is could Sephiroth beat Hercules? And then oh, you God, could go yes. from there. And Sephiroth could beat Hercules, and Cloud can beat Sephiroth. Wait, it depends on which Sephiroth are we talking about. End of game Sephiroth? Uh, j yeah. Well, any Sephiroth, because Cloud beats well, Sephiroth. Uh, well, the problem is, uh, uh, Hercules is a god, so until... Demi Sephiroth Demigod. Gains, well, still, until Sephiroth gains his quote-unquote godhood at the end of the game, at the end of episode 7, it's, he'd have a harder trouble with the Demigod. But on the other hand... Hercules' main thing is his incredible strengths. And he's if... also weak to barrels. So, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I guess Cloud could take him. But could Cloud beat Goku? <laughs> no. And no, we are not going to talk about Goku versus Superman. No, out. but I just got thinking. Um, Cloud versus Hercules, and Sora beat Cloud, so that means Sora can beat Hercules. Yeah. That's... Sora does beat Hercules in this game. Oh, oh. Damn it, you spoiler. To be fair, at this point, I'm pretty sure Cloud could beat. No, Sora could beat anyone. Cause... It's barely a fight. <laughs> Keyblade. There we go. But could Sora beat Sasuke? from that last battle first. Okay, we'll be back. I still can't believe that Squirt actually beat Cerberus. Just between us, I'd already worn Cerberus down by the time the little guy jumped in. My lips are sealed.
Hey, are you all right? Yeah. So, why did you go along with him anyway? I'm looking for someone. Hades promised to help. I tried to exploit the power of darkness, but it backfired. I fell into darkness, and I couldn't find the light. You'll find it. I'm searching too. For your light? Don't lose sight of it. How about a rematch sometime? Fair and square, no dark powers involved. I think I'll pass. He's kind. He's always there for you. And he's handsome to boot. He's perfect. Perfect. Perfectly infuriating. He's crazy. <sighs> Wait a minute. Be worried about me. All the pieces are in place. Relax. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's what you do. Let Hercules train the kid. In the next games, I'll take care of them both. Who invited you to the party? Stay out of this. This is my show. As you wish. Fight to your heart's content. Yeah, it's a mobile game. And I know it's being ported to, like, other systems. But, like... Uh... You know? Yep, and game. now we travel to Traverse Town. This one is... This... Uh, we'll be sped up, so see you in a bit. Oh, sure. Alright, welcome back. We are back in normal speed, and it's time for... Time for us to do some cleaning up some, of some tasks here in Traverse Town. First is using the, the using our new, tr uh, new Trinity. Now we need an egg. Uh, I think... Well, I've been watching some XCOM lately and I keep thinking about SWAT teams, so I'm gonna call it the Breach. That works. Trinity Breach. All in place. Ready to Breach. <laughs> and then they back you down. I'm having like severe weird nostalgia for old games and anime, even though in many respects I know exactly like the stuff we were missing wasn't necessarily that good. Or my standards are Fuck better that. now. I'm watching old anime right now and it's even better. Which one? I'm watching Boogie Pop Phantom right now. Ooh. Oh, I forgot. And then, um... Well, I also... I also watched Excel Saga. And that one sure is. It sure is. <laughs> I like how someone made a parody of the and calling it Microsoft Excel Saga. <laughs> that was from AMV Hell! Yeah. AMV I Hell also... I have a torrent of every AMV Hell video. I used to have every AMV Hell movie, and it's 
It's just, I've lost them. Oh, what but it introduced, me into, it, it introduced me to a ton of anime. I, I think, feel um, like I missed out on something hardcore. You, you've never seen AMV Hell? I... I don't remember anymore. Like, we had shitty internet for a long time. You'd, you'd remember. You'd remember. You really would. It's, um... Oh my god, it's how awesome. big? Jesus Christ. Well, There's the like... Early... The early ones are very small because they yeah. because the file quality of each video was really was not good. But as the as the series progressed, the file size has gotten bigger because yeah, the third one's like an hour long. Yeah, there's which one? Which was the one that begins with Highway to Hell? I think it's the third one. Yeah, I love that opening. That opening was brilliant. Um. <laughs> No, yeah, it's great. You have to watch it. It is gen well, in some in some ways it's a good blast from the past. In other ways, ready to breach. It's um. I mean, it also introduces you into a to a bunch of animes that you may not have known may not have known exist. And because we did the glitch, Aerith and uh, Aerith and Leon are not here. Yeah. They're on to you. Because we broke... <laughs> we broke the game. Oh, that's where it goes. Oh. oh, it's a shortcut. It's a better shortcut that doesn't require you to do horrible jumping. Two more postcards. So I've set up a plot server with an immense amount of uh, pirated anime from mostly from like the 80s to the early 2000s. Great. And Gundam's in it. 80s. I'm trying to Am remember. Right? Oh, there's a lot of stuff in the 80s. It's a lot of um shorter OVAs. Like writing bean. Um, I have a Kira, of course. You have Gundam, right? I have uh, most of the Gundams. Yeah, I have on Blu-ray uh, Gundam, the entire Gundam Wing series and the entire Mobile Fighter G Gundam series. But I'm sorry, I can't. I can't agree with the Kira. I know people like it. But That's I actually so good. got no. I got the to. I got to read it. I got to read better, it. But I don't know. I don't know. I just really love the direction of the um, anime. Like the, it, the way it comes together, just as a whole. I know the story in the manga is better. But I, I, I get man, it. that soundtrack. Okay, like I can give. I can give a soundtrack a pass. But like, if you started with the manga and then you went to the anime, you just. It feels like it cuts halfway through, and you're like, "What is this?" It does. It does. Yeah, I, and it's it's disappointing. It's like you want to see the other half. Yeah, I, but I read uh, the manga after the anime, so I didn't have that issue. Uh, you, uh, uh, Rad, do you remember what exactly is cut from the uh, manga to the anime? I was really like. Oh, there's a lot. I mean, I don't. I can't even tell you exactly what because for what. I, I, mean, remember, like I remember seeing a video on it. It's just I don't remember what exactly was cut. Akira. Yeah, the, like the, like a bunch of stuff was cut from the when they went when they uh, went from the manga to the anime. I mean, do it's you very um? Do you it's remember a very broad um, strokes adaptation? Do you remember um the way the manga goes? See, it's been a while since I've read it. It's 
but so, I okay. remember the anime better because it's been because it sticks out more in my mind. So um, the main thing, I mean, they might have cut one or two things, but the main thing is when um, they cut out a lot of the middle. Okay, they basically took the beginning parts. They kind of they took the bookends basically. Uh, that's an extreme um, end, though, because it, it's when Tetsuo normally in the manga discovers the dome where uh, Akira is being kept, and in the manga, Akira comes out and it starts the whole plot line and everything. But in the anime, instead, he discovers a whole bunch of body parts and spends, I think, the last few minutes trying to figure out what to do with them, and then combines them somehow. Yeah, there's just a, there's a lot of like big and little changes, but like it's to be expected when you're trying to adapt an entire multi-volume series into a what like an hour something movie, hour and a half. Maybe if it were a trilogy, it would have worked better. Like, could somebody redo it as a three-parter? Oh, I doubt anyone's going to touch Akira. No, they're not, but... At, min not at minimum, it would have it would have been nice to have it as a two-parter. Because um, that would yeah. have helped a lot. It's too much of a... Uh... Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's too much of a... Um... Oh, what was the word for it? I forgot what I was going to say, but it, it's too much of a classic, really, to, that anyone's going to try to go back and outdo it. Yeah, at this point, everybody's kind of... got their own ideas of what's right and why bother oh the original ghost in the shell though yeah that was really good i watched that in my japanese history class when i took that that's right and i wrote a, i wrote a i wrote a paper on it um Where's some other notable elements of my collection? We got Ranma one half. You gotta have Ranma one half. I only read that one. It's just I just think it's very charming. Yeah. I there's a, there's a lot of anime that like when I watch them they make me smile. Well, that's one of them. Um, Yu Yu Hakusho. Of course. Gotta have it. I don't remember if I actually watched that one. Oh, wow. I went straight from Dragon Ball to that. Went straight from Dragon Ball to Yu Yu Hakusho? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I love it. It's one of my favorite, probably, shounen anime of all time. The only, the only thing I wish it was longer, but I, ex I understand that it ended when it did. It ended as it did because it was it ended at a good point but yeah does it, make, does it hurt does it make it so that i don't wish it was longer nope i well, definitely I have, did not watch this i have the entirety of slayers All of JoJo. A big. Oh shit! Big JoJo. Wait, there. we got something cool. What did we get? I wasn't paying attention. I was thinking about anime. We got Simba, but uh, we will not be showing him off until next episode because uh, we'll be going to the. There's a there's a fight in the next re uh, requisite world that we have to go to. The one we don't get to cho choose where we go. That has a very good mandatory fight for Simba. That, or I should say, mandatory fight that's really good to use Simba in. It's it really is amazing. Like, I know this has been around on the internet for a while, and you know, there you are. What's going on? Riku! 
Hey, hey, cut it out. I'm not dreaming this time. Right? I hope not. It took forever to find you. Riku! Wait a second, where's Kairi? Isn't she with you? Well, don't worry. I'm sure she made it off the island too. We're finally free. Hey, she might even be looking for us now. We'll all be together again soon. Don't worry. Just leave everything to me. I know this... Leave it to who? Sora, uh, what did you... I've been looking for you, and Kairi too, with their help. Who are they? <laughs> We've visited so many places and worlds, looking for you. Really? Well, what do you know? I never would have guessed. Oh, and guess what? Sora is the Keyblade Master. Who was your planet? What's that mean? So, this is called a Keyblade? Huh? Hey, give it back! Catch. Whoa. Okay, so you're coming with us, right? We've got this awesome rocket. Wait till you see it. No, he can't come. What? Forget it. Oh, come on. He's my friend. I don't care. Oh, he's gone. Riku? Nice going. Oh well. At least he's okay. And who knows? Maybe we'll run into Kyrie soon too. I think even if you could, you couldn't answer that question. <laughs> oh God, I don't even I'm know if Nomura scared. knows what Nomura's thinking. I would be afraid to dive into Nomura's mind. Just a bunch of belts. <laughs> you get lost. Well, you already did a dive into the heart, so uh, yeah. It's like the uh, it's like the Narnia wardrobe, but it's all belts that you have to push through. <laughs> I, was th I was thinking it was more like a Yugi's mind in uh, Yu uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you uh, when uh, you see y when you see the episodes where Yami is exploring the inner depths of his mind, it's just a labyrinth and maze. Yeah. So, uh, remember Yu-Gi-Oh! I've been Yu -Oh watching Yu-Gi-Oh! too. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. But I've been watching the actual anime. I hate to ask, um, is it actually any fun? Yu-Gi-Oh! The game? The, the anime. Oh, the anime? Yeah, the anime is fun. You see, it's just as I told you. While you toiled away trying to find your dear friend, he quite simply replaced you with some new companions. Evidently, now he values them far more than he does you. You're better off without that wretched boy. Now think no more of him and come with me. I'll help you find what you're searching for. He's yeah, originally... there was only like there was there was only one issue where they actually play. There's like maybe no. Maybe it was one arc. Too. It was one arc where they played um, dual monsters, and then um, they went back to like because it was originally death about game. like death games. Yeah, it was like awesome. I remember. I remember there's an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh Season Zero. He uh, where Yugi played a death game with a. Uh, I think he was a rapist in a restaurant, and he, uh... And it was he wasn't dad. a rapist, he was a robber. Okay, robber. Okay, and he, it was the one where, uh, he got lit on fire because yeah. the, uh... Because the alcohol spilled on him. Yeah, he set a guy on fire. Um, he blows up a kid by playing uh, air hockey on a heated, like, oki okinomiyaki table with, uh, the, like, gunpowder in, like, an ice puck. It's insane. Yu-Gi-Oh! is awesome. And even, you know, once they get to the card game stuff, it's still awesome. It's still really stupid. Um... Actually... 
So the dub is obviously a four kids dub. And it gets... And all that entails. It gets, um... It, it censors things heavily. But the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub is kind of like an official abridged series. It's very funny. Not... Uh... You say that, but then you re if you're if you're going for an official uh, official abridged uh, series, you go with Ghost Stories. Well, Ghost Stories is the one everyone knows. Ghost Stories is the most famous one. Um, <laughs> if you haven't watched Ghost Stories, go and watch Ghost Stories. If... It is goddamn hilarious. Well, I guess That's I know what basically... I'm researching now. Oh, you haven't seen Ghost Stories? Oh, that's... Oof, I can't believe that. See, I but... watched Ghost... I got watched Ghost Stories after I... Uh, do you know who the uh, YouTuber Falero is? No. Okay, well, he did an abridged version of Higarashi When They Cry. Oh, and my I God. His, uh, he, I watched his abridged series, and then I found... Uh, and then I found uh, Ghost Stories, the English dub, right after that. And I was like, oh, my God, this is brilliant. Don't, um, don't get me started on Higurashi. I'm a very big One Day Cry fan. I, uh, have read, uh, Higurashi. I've read Umineko. Uh, I haven't read, um, Sukonia, but probably will eventually. I've played the, f I've played, um, the, uh, Umineko fighting game. It's good stuff. Alright. Boss fight time. So we can lock the world. Yeah. Which really doesn't mean anything in the long term. No, it's just kind of a... still here. Yeah, it's just kind of a thing that you do. It's almost like it would have worked before the Heartless appeared. Yeah. I Probably should have done that. Then. <laughs> but no, I will say that a lot. Oh, this is gonna. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should bring the anime discussion here. But a lot of um, a lot of adult anime dubbing is pretty much just a bridge series. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with bringing the anime discussion here. I mean, we have Amaro yeah. here, right here with us. And I mean, I'm I'm and living vicariously. Now, think about if Hero Yui pilot, piloted the Gundam Wing. The Wing Gundam like this. Just reverse the arms and legs for no random reason. I think that that's a winning strategy. Probably is. Zeon would be toast if they did this. I mean, they are toast anyways, but... <laughs> we wouldn't have gotten any of the other um, UC timeline shows if they had just done this strat. <laughs> you, uh, you thought my hands were my arms? Uh, you, you thought my hands were my hands? No, they're my legs! Speaking of Gundam, I got... um. Uh... Hold on. Gundam, it's um Gundam um Extreme Versus on the PS4, which is like a 3D arena fighter, and it's genuinely like a good video game. I know anime arena fighter doesn't inspire the most confidence in people, but also like. It's fun. Also, the people who play it are very dedicated. Oh, it's one of those. Day. Yeah, it's uh, it's like an arena fighter, but it's it's a real game. It's a real fighting game. I will say, whatever gun you got. It has to be able to shoot massive lasers from the underside of its body. I'm sure there's something that does that. I'm sure... 
Um, I don't know. Well, when, in bird, mode, in... when in bird mode, it's kind of like that for a wing Gundam. I'm sure there's some Gundam from G Gundam that can lift its skirt up and shoot lasers out of it. There's a lot of wacky Gundams. <laughs> Tequila Gundam. <laughs> oh god, don't get me started the on Tequila. Race, the most racist Gundam. Don't... Do you remember what um, the the Neo Mexico colony looks like? How it's yeah, a, exactly how it's a big that. sombrero. Yeah, <laughs> with cactuses. Boy, what what a show G Gundam is. And I just oh no, I just looked it up. <laughs> it's, I just looked it up. The, um... It's racist. It is literally the most racist thing in the show. And there's oh my the God. Dutch Gundam that's a big windmill. Every country has a Gundam, and they're all stereotypes. Why? Uh, uh, although I will give them, I will give them props. It was likely unintentional racism because they probably didn't know what the fuck they were doing. The worst part is I can't even say too much about the windmills, except that it should also be. Cheese, tulips, and bicycles. But that wouldn't look good. Oh my god, these photos just keep getting worse and worse. <laughs> how stupid everything in G Gundam looks. I lied. There's cool. There's cool G Gundam designs. There's just a lot of really stupid ones too. Pharaoh Gundam 13. Greece. Oh, no. Oh, why? Why are you breaking my brain? Oh, God, no, there's the windmill. No. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> it's, it's not just, like, vaguely based on a windmill. It's just a big, dumb windmill with arms and legs. Oh, God, and Spain. Uh, Spain. And then there's, uh, what is, uh, there's Neo, Ken is. The Neo Kenya's Zebra Gundam. Yeah. And, uh, it's got a spear. Neo, Neo, not Neo Sweden. Who's this the Mermaid Gundam? That would be Denmark. Yeah, Neo Denmark's Mermaid Gundam, That's which Spanish. is hilarious. Pescatory. Ugh. Also, we uh, we are here at the end of the episode, so I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we will be back. Uh, we'll be back next week for episode 7 in which we finally go to a new world so, yeah thanks for sitting through all the anime talk yeah thanks for sitting through fan fiction uh good job yeah see y'all later bye bye